Hi there, everyone. Lars back with another Writer's Rant. Brought to you by Camille's Harem. Not just a podcast for novice writers by novice writers, but also a YouTube channel. By novice writers for novice writers. Because writing is an adventure, it's more fun with friends. And today I want to rant about knowing who your publishers are. Who your agents are. Who are you getting into bed with to make your creative endeavors happen. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about this is because... I feel that a lot of people are kind of missing the point with some horrible news that is coming out of the House of Mouse, aka Disney, aka Ricky Rat, aka the company that suddenly everyone loves to hate on, but for good reason. So what's this horrible bit of news, you might ask? Well, here it is. And yes, I am going to take a quick dig at some people who are like, we are staying ahead of the culture curve by telling you this information from two weeks ago that Disney wants to start acquiring anime IP. Well, let me just tell you this. Disney has already been in the business of acquiring anime for a while now. And I'm not just talking about their short-lived, very awkward stint with the licensing rights for Studio Ghibli movies. No, I'm talking about Disney actively going out of their way to try to buy up some of the best upcoming anime and then subsequently sinking it. So sorry, WEW Pro, and sorry, Mother's Basement. You guys are late to the party. Disney has already been acquiring anime and then sinking it, and it doesn't seem to make any sense until you realize Disney just likes to acquire nice, shiny new toys in the hopes that people are going to give them big money for acquiring these nice, shiny new toys, but then realizing only after they've bought it that, oh, maybe this isn't exactly what we wanted to buy. A couple of great examples. Disney really, really wanted and acquired the licensing rights to Summertime Rendering and to Heavenly Delusion. The reason for that being is because both of these manga adaptations came highly recommended with a strong pedigree of art of artistry of storytelling of amazing awards overseas and vast amounts of fans eager and ready to watch these things and then to consume product everything that disney could possibly want but then only afterwards did Disney realize, oh, summertime rendering has a lot of violence and a lot of implied nudity. Hmm, yeah, this is not right for our family brand. Oh, Heavenly Delusion has a transgender character as the main character? Fantastic, we will take her up. Oh, you mean to tell us that she gets... <clears throat> taken advantage of at the end of the season in the absolute worst way possible uh, oh we didn't realize what we were buying both of those shows are on hulu for you to watch and are nearly impossible to find and neither were they given any advertising as such to gorgeously made anime and sure we can quibble about the storytelling especially for heavenly delusion i've definitely had that conversation for another video but those shows were basically killed. The Western audiences for anime have almost no clue what happened with Summertime Rendering, which is easily one of the strongest and best animated series to come out of Japan in the last few years. And Heavenly Delusion, even for all of its controversies, definitely deserved its own day because it is such a powerful story on so many levels, and yet Disney buried it because what they thought they would get would be some nice LGBTQ plus brownie points for acquiring this only to then realize oh this isn't exactly what we wanted had buyer's remorse and then proceed to bury the story furthermore Disney has continued to do this with various anime buying up high profile anime licensing only then to squash it provide no western advertising and to make it nearly impossible to find on proper, legitimate streaming services. Now, the thing that Mother's Basement and WDW Pro might have a hard time with understanding, why would anyone do this? Why would, throw, why would someone throw away so much money to then not get anything in return? Well, Disney is lazy. Disney has no respect for animation. They had simply hoped that by acquiring these properties that they would bring on massive amount of fans, draw all kinds of anime viewers and fans over to Hulu and to Disney Plus, and thereby gain copious amounts, not copious, but massive amounts of money, and then it didn't happen. And then this is where things get even trickier and more disturbing, 
is that as is that as Disney has come to realize that anime has such a presence now here in the West that's become far more mainstream, and that way more people are now watching anime rather than the garbage cartoons that they're pumping out after they decide to axe stuff like the Owl House and then push Amphibia and others into oblivion. Yeah, well, if no one's going to watch their junk, then they might as well take over other people's property. Again, this is basically Disney's M.O., that they go around buying up other people's rights, other people's stories, and then they disney them, which nowadays means that they're going to make a story which is going to be more preachy, it's going to be bland, it's just it's going to lack substance. It's really hard to tell what Disney wants to even do with any of their storytelling these days. A lot of the veteran storytellers who are no longer a part of the House of Mouse have said that Disney animators and Disney storytellers and Disney producers, directors and writers don't really want to tell stories anymore. They don't even know how to write good characters anymore. So now then, if they turn their attention on over to anime, which is already kind of prepackaged thanks to what the mangas are usually many anime are based off of already pre-done mangas or mangas that are currently being written that they're like, hey, you know what? We can just take that. And now if we can put more money into the industry and we can throw around our weight as Disney, we then can exert more influence on how mangas are adapted into anime and even what is actually published in manga magazines. And this is part of an even bigger a headache and tussle and wrestle that Disney's been having with certain Japanese companies that they want, for instance, the Oriental Land Company to play ball with whatever Disney executives say. But because it is a separate company, they don't have to listen to what Disney tells them to do. They just have to write the check to Disney for the rights that they hold over what Disney has given them license to do. And Disney definitely needs their money, but Disney doesn't want just their money anymore. They want control over these companies. Disney has gotten away for decades now with getting whatever it wants within American and European entertainment. They've been able to buy their way in and bully their way into all of these different uh, companies all the way from television to book publishing to comic books to films. They even control and they can even control uh, theatrical chains. Your movie theaters are subjected to the whims of Disney in many cases, and especially in some other countries where Disney has completely bullied and abused various companies. As a result, Disney feels like they can get away with anything. Japan is one of those countries. He's not just one particular company, but where multiple companies have resisted and pushed back against Disney multiple times. So it would seem at glance then that, hey, you know what, Disney is going to fail yet again. And how can Disney do anything when they're bleeding so much money all over the place? Their movies aren't making any money, their shows aren't making any money, their merchandise isn't really making any money, only the parks and the cruises are really making money, but even they are not making the amounts of cash that they once did. Disney is falling apart, which is again why I did a video last year that Disney has been manhandled by the indie studio Glitch from Australia. And unfortunately for Glitch, if they continue succeeding like this, within three years' time, Disney is going to throw their weight around in Australia and try to and try to crush Glitch out of existence. And unfortunately, that's just what's going to happen because, again, that's part of Disney's MO. But here's the thing. In order to make all of this manga and anime, a it costs a lot of money. The anime industry does make tons of money, but with all of the anime that are made every single year on pretty big budgets in some cases, and everything that goes into the creating of the manga and the merchandise, that's a massive investment. And while the anime industry as a whole has made tons of money, they also flirt with disaster. Many shows go under. Many shows lose them millions of dollars. And when you convert it on over from yen to dollars, millions of dollars are lost every year, potentially even tens of millions of dollars. But their successes re, uh, rake in just enough to cover all those losses, and then everything is just fine and dandy.
But these companies, because they're constantly flirting with danger, they need to have they need to have a cushion. They need to have a golden parachute of sorts. They need to have assurances that everything's going to be just fine in order to support this massive industry, which, much like farming, if you got one bad year, could completely wipe out entire companies. That's where Disney comes in with all of the money that they can still have, they can still throw, even as they're bleeding cash from multiple paper cuts and wounds all over the place from the last five years of just absolute degeneracy and bad business practices. Disney is massive. They're a corporation. And they're in many cases basically a monopoly. They can throw tons of money over at Japan and fund entire anime companies, entire studios, to basically make movies and shows the way that Disney wants them, in exchange for a fat paycheck. Now, Japanese studios don't need to play ball, and in fact, with current legislation running through Japan, it will be very difficult for Disney, or any outside company actually, to exert that much influence. And if you buy the licensing rights alone, yeah sure, you can try to control how things are dubbed or subtitled, but Japan still actually holds quite a bit of influence, and because of all the things that have gone on recently with localizers, Japan can say, yeah, you know what, you guys have the licensing rights, which that means you can put it onto your Hulu, Hulu, Disney Plus, whatnot, but we are in charge of the dubs. We are in charge of the subtitles. You don't get any of that. And then Disney is screwed, which is why Disney is going to try its absolute best to throw its weight around and take power, take control. And if you throw enough money at a problem, sometimes that problem yields to you. And Disney has shown again year after year after year that when the going gets tough, they just continue to throw cash at that problem and hope to overwhelm it with time, persistence, and Mickey Bucks. And so there is a possibility, there is a chance that anime could yield to Disney's influence. And then you have then from the ground up, Disneyfied manga and anime without substance, without good characters, how much of a message or story that's just basically there to try to get you to buy stuff with the most surface level stupid preachy whatnot crap that's been thrown out time and time again by Disney in recent years and they will happily do it too and they will happily sink whatever company works with them because it's Disney they don't care they're so big that it'll take a long time before they fall down. And it doesn't matter if they use other companies to throw onto the tar pit in front of them so that way they can keep themselves above water just a little bit longer. They will do it. Now, to come back to the, my introduction for this rant, why the heck am I bringing all of this up with Disney when it comes to working with your publisher or anything like that? Well, good that you asked this question. Good that you remember how I opened... Well, here's the thing. As a creator, if you're an author or comic book writer, if you're, if you're working on a show idea, what have you, you're going to have to work with other people in order to make your project happen, especially if you want to do it traditionally. Sure, you can go the route of self-publishing and self-creating, but that's going to cost a lot of money. That's going to require a lot of resources. And unless you're willing to, to go through a lot of hurdles, to get the resources that you need, which is going to take a whole lot of time, you may go bust. The safest option, and the option that usually puts enough money into your pocket to continue going, is to go the traditional route, which means you're going to have to work with agents, you're going to have to work with publishers, you're going to have to work with studios and companies to make your project happen if you want to make the big bucks and actually make a career out of what you love doing. But here's the thing. You can do the research. You can have a look at who these people are, who are the publishers, who are the agents, who are the companies, who are the studios that you wish to work with. What have other people said who've had the chance to work with them? What are the dream stories and what are the nightmare stories that have come out of these companies? How well have they done? How well have they treated people? How much money are they actually making? How often do they deliver on the promises that they make to creators? All of that information is at your fingertips, but it requires doing the research. What well, I suggest you do, especially speaking to my fellow authors out there, start looking at potential agents. There's all different kinds of websites out there that will help you to connect with various agents. 
you want to have a look at these agents, what they've written in their bios, what co what companies they've worked with, what authors they've worked with, what books they've managed to help publish, and see if that's anything within the vein of what you want to do. Do they like the stories that you want to tell? If so, you'll want to reach out to them. If not, don't waste your time. When it comes to publishing companies, see which publishing companies are good, especially to up and coming authors. Some seem to promise a whole lot, but really they only want guaranteed successes and they really love the people who've been publishing for a long time. Many times publishing companies will take advantage of new time publishers and give them really crappy deals. So that way they can make good money off of your book if it succeeds, but if it doesn't, they can throw you to the wind. And you want to see how studios and companies treat up and coming creators. It's only how it's only very recently that people are beginning to question whether or not they would ever want to take their projects to Disney. But all uh, but up until really last year there were still people who were giddy with excitement to take their projects to Disney and then Disney would happily kill whatever it was that was pitched to them and that they took. Very very few projects ever had the chance to succeed and even then those projects were only taken on either because they were cheap and easy to make or because it would score them good social brownie points on Twitter. We creators, we need to make sure that we do not allow ourselves to be taken advantage of. And I have seen it happen time and time again in my own journey as an author trying to get published that there are so many people out there who want to take advantage of you. Read the contracts carefully. Talk to a lawyer. Yeah, sure, lawyers can be scary and they can be expensive at times. But you really want a lawyer up. You want to get good insight into contracts, into deals. You want to do the research on what is the industry standard. You want to see what other people have gone through. You want to find protection for yourself because not all agents and publishers are good people who are going to give you the best chance possible. Some of them are just out to make money. And sure, that's their job. They're supposed to make money. If they don't make money, their business shrivels up and then no book gets published or put onto the shelf for people to buy up. And that's kind of a sad route to go. We don't want to see that happen. But because that is the cutthroat nature of the business, in many, many cases, there are people who just don't really care. They just want to find the next best seller. And if you have it, they will use you. And if you're not careful, and if you're not protecting yourself, you will get used up and then you get thrown to the curb. You want to be careful know who you are working with know if you're potentially working with a company or an agent or a publisher like Disney who is going to look fantastic on the outside and give all these amazing promises and has all this amazing money and resources at their disposal but will then destroy your book and destroy your story in the process there's so many of them like that out there. And again, that's kind of scary to think about. It's one of the reasons why some people are like, I don't want to go through the pains of all that rejection only to then get picked up and then get used and abused by someone, which is again why do the research. Keep an eye on everything that's going on within the publishing industry. Do your research, do your due diligence, get feedback from other people, talk with other people who are within the industry, speak with a lawyer when you need to, definitely do that because they will give you some excellent advice, especially when it's time to start working up and we're working on building and signing contracts. You need to take care of yourself because these companies are, are out there to take care of themselves, to make money. That's just the nature of the business. And if you're not taking care of yourself, you will get taken advantage of. This is effectively my cautionary tale to all other authors and creators out there. Be very careful about who you're working with. Because as we can see happening in real time with Disney and with anime, big, big names with big, big money are out there to take advantage of people. And granted, a lot of us are just the small folk, the small ants who get stepped on or stepped over and they don't care. But the moment that you really try to make a name for yourself, you're gonna have to deal with these people. You're gonna have to deal with that world. And you need to know what you're getting yourself involved in and take it from someone who went in with big eyes, sparkling, being like, oh, the, the, the sky is the limit. Yeah, the sky is definitely a beautiful limit up there. And most people are not going to help you even get a couple of inches off the ground. So, <laughs> with all of that being said, I will provide in the description 
links to resources that will hopefully help you out as an author, as a creator, if you want to get traditionally published, because there are indeed resources out there to really give you a good leg up. And not just here from Camille's Harem, but there's plenty of other authors and creators out there who will provide other resources and material as well. Again, just make sure that you're doing your research, because if you don't do your research, you will make some bad choices and you will get taken advantage of. And I do not want to see that happen to any of my fellow creators. And if you'd like to know kind of, well, what happens if you decide to go the independent route, well, you can read the end product of that and judge for yourself if that's really where you want to go. All of the books that I have independently published are in the description below. Please give them a read. You can also read through some of my experiences. I put them into some of the introductions and author's notes, and you can see for yourself what it's like. It is an incredible adventure. I love writing. I love creating. I love being here and doing what I'm doing. But it is difficult. It's hard. So make sure that you, again, are doing your due diligence, doing your research, making connections before you, before you sign on to anything. So that way you can take care of yourself and make the story the best that it can be. Why? Well, because you need your story, your story needs you, and the world needs your story as the best that it can possibly be, and not just what some greedy company like Disney wants it to be. So with all that being said, thank you so much for being here for this rather long protracted writer's rant. We very much appreciate it. And until the next video, y'all, tschüss.